Well, we're back after a little hiatus. Uh, I did see Jared recently, but haven't seen Matt in a while. And, you know, we took a little summer vacation, had our partner podcast take front and center stage. A lot of good feedback on that, guys. It was uh, it was fun to do, but it was great to hear uh, up close and personal some of the stories from our partners. Yeah, I think some of the partners, everyone who lives in mid-Michigan, Shiawassee County, mm-hmm. especially Corona Wasso, they're, they're definitely recognizable names that everyone sees everywhere. Corey Shook, Success Group, you know, Jacobs Insurance, you know, all, all the other ones, Rivals, Tap House and Grill. Everyone knows who they are. But sometimes it's cool to see a little more of a laid back conversation with the owners or, you know, the people who run it. Even Dawn from the Shiawassee County Fair. I mean, I think yeah. that's coming up here in a few days. Kind of gets you geared up for the fair. So I think it's sometimes to peel the curtain back and have a conversation like that is cool. Yeah, it really was. I mean, we talked about it, you know, in the pre pre recording before we threw it to all those interviews. I mean, the, a lot of the power hitters kind of in our area who have really done a good job, you know, bringing businesses to to Owasso and to Corona. I mean, the restaurant scene. I mean, it's it sucks, man. We've had a couple of businesses burn down, including like smoking Johnny V's and Corona. But yeah. the the amount of businesses that have been coming to Owasso and Corona, it's it's been great to see and. and I mean, honest God, it's because of those people that we had on for the most part. Absolutely right. I mean, very uh, area oriented for business, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, those were our two partner pods. If you didn't get a chance to tune in, definitely catch up on it. But speaking of catch up, uh, the biggest story for at least Jared and I, I think, is uh, we had our family rebellion up at Onaway. uh, Family rebellion. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh yeah good time as always great weather i mean you had one bad day tuesday i think it rained it it prevented some people setting up their tents and stuff but other than that it was beautiful weather and another good time putting the books we were talking before we started recording ted like how many years have you guys been doing this in a row 35 if you count the covid year which we couldn't do but it, it would be 35 consecutive if you had covid in there and that's pretty good ever since 1999 it's been all the way through my parents started it they f- first made an appearance up there and scoped it out in 1982 um <laughs> you know it, it was a periodic get together before 99 and then you know a lot of my sisters and brothers had kids so when they were infants and stuff we really didn't do it but once they became of age you know like three four years old it was just non-stop jared how old were you do you think when first time you went there any idea like, what two or three probably Something I, mean, like I don't that. even remember it yeah it, right? it was that long ago so like i've gone every year of my life like you said other than the covid year which we still right. got together as a family and did something. I, I think we was actually in your at your house, right? It was at my house, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, not that not that any COVID rules were broken. Uh, <laughs> right. but, no, uh, I think Uncle George that, is still bitter about that. <laughs> yeah, the one thing that um, it was kind of weird this year, and it, 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 it's it's a cool. Tr- so basically, what this campground is, it's a UAW campground right. uh, for union workers that worked in the auto industry. And like, and yep. in fact, when we were there, there was a big union leaders from all across the country that met at this you know, conference center and had meetings all week. The thing that's been weird though, in a tradition they've always had that I always liked was they don't let cars that were not built in America into the campground. Oh, really? And I don't know if it's just within the last five years, but my car wasn't allowed in basically nobody's car was allowed in, you know, and it's cars that you would have met, you would think were built in America. I mean, Chevy Blazer, Buicks, Fords, like you look at this outside lot where you have to park your car if you can't get inside the campground and it's all American cars or it's all American brand name cars that were apparently were built in, you know, Mexico, or I had somebody tell me that a Buick was built in Korea. Uh, it's just crazy to me where the auto industry has gone. I mean, we were talking about that, what, a month ago when the, when the Tigers unveiled their Motor City uniforms. Right. I mean, it, you know, we, we love the Motor City when it comes to slapping it on an alternate jersey, but when it comes to actually building some cars in this country, it, it doesn't even apply anymore. And it's right. weird to think. I mean, I think Tesla is the only company that 100% of their cars are built in the United States. It's a little bit of a tangent I'm going on, but I just thought it was weird seeing all these American brand cars, not a single one of them are built in the United States. Yeah, I agree with some of that, uh, but we should clarify just slightly. It's not uh, an American auto uh, workers campground. It's UAW, and that's the key. The, the the GM products and Ford and that that are built in Mexico or other countries are not built by UAW. So I understand right. where they dig a, put a line in the sand there. I mean, it's it's unfortunate. Hey, we're fortunate that they at least let you drop your stuff off and then bring <laughs> yeah. it 
then bring it out to the workers' parking lot. <laughs> yeah, at least they don't tell you like, no, you're not allowed in the parking or in the campground at all. That's kind of a cool, I guess, paying homage to the people that worked at or for the UAW. Yeah. You know, to say like, because you got to think some of those cars that stuff that was made in Mexico or wherever probably was jobs taken away from those people that were, you know, a part of the UAW. So I, I could exactly. see there would be a little bit like, no, I don't want that car coming in here. I used to make that, but now it's overseas or whatever. It yeah. is also crazy how, how that's changed. I mean, my dad, grandpa, you know, lifelong and still have uncles and other family members that, that work for GM. So, you know, I've, I've heard a lot about all that stuff and how it's changed. I mean, it's just, you know, it used to be, yes, everything was made right there in Flint or right mm -hmm. there in Detroit. And now, yeah, even if it's just like the door is made in Mexico, but everything else is made, you know, it's just, it's just crazy how that whole industry has changed. Well, think about even like whatever it was. When did the movie Gran Torino come out? 2008. So 15 years ago. One of the classic right. scenes in that movie, his son shows up in like a Mitsubishi or something like that. And he just like has the most disgusted look on his face. Right. I mean, Clint, Clint Eastwood. In today's modern era, he would have went to the store, bought a, a Chevy Blazer or whatever, only to find out that it wasn't even made in America. Right. I, I just, it just blows my mind yeah. that it, it just blows my mind that all these yeah. companies that are, you know, you would, you just assume, oh, it's it's American made car, like it's got to be made in America, and like basically none of them are made yeah. in America. Within five years, is anything going to be made on American soil anymore? Yeah, it's kind of sad, and it's too bad that, uh, you know, the higher-ups allowed it to happen, but that's right. the way it is. Now, I will say this. I do have a little bit of of, uh, of a conscience that I had put into my head from my dad. You know, he was a proud UAW worker from Fisher Body Number 1 in, in Flint. That was the home of the original sit-down strike. Uh, you know, I, I've never had a foreign car. Uh, I was looking, to tell you the truth, I was looking to buy a pickup truck recently, a Ford Maverick. It's one of those smaller, smaller yeah. pickup trucks, really sharp looking, but I did a little investigating into it. And again, it's made in Mexico, not by the UAW. And so I didn't pull the trigger. I'm, right. you know, I'm sticking with it. Now, if I get a great, great deal on a used car, I'm not saying it's impossible that I would <laughs> right. go that way, but you know, something new, no way. That's no, just I, how I roll. I'm kind of the same way again with my dad and my grandpa and and my wife's dad worked for Saturn for a long time and is mm -hmm. retired from Saturn. So similar thing. Not only do you kind of have that in your blood, like I'd feel bad driving a Ford or something else, you know, <laughs> right? Because it's like, man, this, this is paying for my our parents, you know, pension yeah. and stuff like that. But it's also you get the family discount. So right, it's kind of right. like, you know, you, you get that little bit <laughs> of a, I mean, it's a little bit, you get a little bit right. of a deal on your car. So yeah, no, I I didn't know that that was the campground that you guys went to. That's that's pretty cool. That adds to the, I guess, the tradition story of it all. So it is cool yeah. that you guys have kept that going. I've got to ask, though, who won the, the famous cornhole tournament? Did that happen yeah. this year? Or? Yeah. It, was, it wasn't Jared, that's for sure. <laughs> right. No, right? I had, I actually had a, a four-banger happen to me in the, uh, I think, quarterfinals. If that happens in one round, basically, you might as well just call it a game after that. Yeah. I've never seen one of those in person. <laughs> <laughs> but when it happens to you, it's like the most demoralizing thing that ever happened. So actually, my cousin Ryan uh, won it. And it's kind of been a funny story where I think he's made it to the championship game maybe two or three times and always has lost. So he finally kind of pulled through uh, and won. So I, nice. I didn't win. Um, probably part of the fact is because I've been locked inside um, for the last <laughs> week or two weeks, basically, until this camping trip. So I Did went and got COVID uh, or something. College football 25. I went and pulled the trigger. Oh, and yeah, it. yeah. Well, I heard <laughs> about, about that. It. It was the game that was never ever going to come out until yep. it finally did. It's it's glorious. Um, they've already I see they've already pulled five hundred million dollars in revenue already yeah. from this game. It's not even two weeks old. Uh, it, it's it's perfect. They they have all the really? traditions of college football. Whenever you if you go to CMU, for example, you know you're going to hear the fire up chips chant. If you and you're going to hear their first down chant. I don't even remember what their first down chant is, but how they did it is amazing. The graphics are great. I, what we were worried about is, oh, this is going to be too much like Madden. And right. it's not. It still has all the, you know, what I what I associate with college football video games is the speed of the game. The players are all fast. Uh, it, it's high scoring. Whereas Madden, it, you look up and it's 17-14 at the end of the game. Yeah. I've already played three or four seasons uh, of my <laughs> dynasty. Arkansas State, they've already won a couple titles. Um, it, it's just a great game. It's addicting, man. It's funny. When I first got it, it was I was on All-Star break. 
So I had three or four days off right in a row right when it came out. You, I would get on that game at like, you know, 7 p.m. I'd be playing. I would think it would be like an hour or two. I look up at the clock. It's like 1 a.m. Like where <laughs> the hell did the time go? It's such yeah. a time suck. It's so addicting. It's a great game. But uh, it really gets you in the college football mood, man. Yeah, I haven't picked it up. I always said once that thing came out, I have a PS4. So obviously that game only came out for the PS5. I always said when or if that game came out, that would be when I pull the trigger and buy a PS5 so I can play it. I haven't yet. Mainly, I was, so I was surprised to hear your review. Obviously, I would say that's the that's the majority of people's reviews, how amazing the game is. But I've actually heard, and even like people at work who play it, said it's actually pretty glitchy and there's like some stuff that goes wrong and Mm. you'll be getting tackled and all of a sudden the ball will like shoot forward and you'll be scoring a touchdown or like there's just weird stuff like that so you have to imagine there's probably going to be a patch or an update coming out pretty soon to fix all those bugs um but no like seeing the clips of people playing their dynasty recruiting against friends and you know playing at the big house and stuff like that and that's that's the fun thing is to do a dynasty with a team like arkansas state it'd be easy to do Michigan and just roll on and win a bunch of titles, but no, you got to pick, pick someone like Arkansas state and win a bunch of titles that way. That's what's, that's, what's fun. So and, no, and, I, and it for sure, there is like, there is still some kinks to work out. Like for example, people were like, the game is so damn hard and it took me, like, it took me a while to figure it out. I remember the first night I got it and I just spent all this money getting a PS five, getting the game, downloading it, setting it up first, like two or three hours. I was like losing to the computer. They would be like FCS Northwest, and I would be, you know, Michigan or whatever. And I could, I would lose by like 40. It was, <laughs> I was like, I was like, honestly thinking to myself, like, man, I really think video games have just like passed me by. I'll right. never be up to speed with these games anymore. Finally, I got a, got the hang of it, kind of figured out a few sort of plays you can rely on that the computer basically can never de- defend. Once I figured that out, now I can start winning games. But you're right. There are some still some things they got to work out. It almost felt like they just they kind of gave you almost the bare bones of the game. Like, let's just get them the game and let's start figuring it out as we go, which right. is kind of crazy mm-hmm. considering how much time they've had. But I've also seen like, re, uh, you know, Chris Fowler just said, like, man, now that I've seen the game and how it's done, like, I want to go in and re record more uh, voiceovers to get more excitement. Like, it, it's just the game is not perfect, but given all the hype that was surrounding it, you knew there was going to be a little bit of backlash toward it. I think for the most part, They've not they've knocked it out of the park. Yeah, like I, I saw some clips of like it was like a crazy pick six to end the game type of situation. And the the call from Fowler and Herbie was like pretty underwhelming because it was right. you know it's a video game. It's not, you know, like it's not gonna be perfect. So people were saying stuff like that, like, yeah, they need to go back in and re-record some tracks for you know some different scenarios yeah. or whatever. But it's yeah, it's not gonna be perfect, especially this game hasn't been out for 10 years, you know, so they, they're going to figure some stuff out. But so do you play on Heisman or do you play on? Oh, yeah. oh, okay. I had to do Heisman, man. I had to because if you win, if you win on anything else, it's me. I like like to be it's more addicting that it's it's hard. It, right. Who wants to like just jump in with Arkansas State year one, run the tide, win every game by 40. And now you're now what do you do? Right. I like it where it's like it took me like three or four years to win a title because I really had to build my team up. It, it, yep. it, I like that it's hard. Well, well, for people like me that don't really understand how this game goes, I yeah. mean, I understand the concept of it. What are you talking about, uh, Heisman? What, what's that? So Heisman, basically, so they have different levels of difficulty. Freshman, uh-huh. uh, varsity, All-American, Heisman. So if you're playing on Heisman, now the computer, you know, it's intercepting every pass. Where if you're playing on freshman, like, let's say you throw it right to a defender, the guy's going to drop it. Uh-huh. So it, it, it's just the hardest difficulty setting. And Dynasty, the game mode, basically, it's like you're the head coach of a program. You got to recruit guys. You, you got a custom schedule. You you have to, you know, handle depth chart moves. You, you There's a lot that goes into it. Honestly, the recruiting is the most fun part to me, right. is, is trying to get these guys. So that's what I've gotten a kick out of, honestly, more so than the actual games. Uh, is, the, is the actual game – sorry, Matt, I didn't mean to cut you All off, right. but I, I'm a little curious. Is the actual game – just like college football, I mean, you have the you have the game clock, uh, play clock, and all that. You got to make the call yeah. within a certain amount of time. Yeah, so you can adjust all that. Like, I think the the normal setting is like I think six minute quarters, mm-hmm. but but the clock doesn't run the same way. Like, it's still like the score will be about the same with a five minute quarter game as it would be for a twelve minute actual or fifteen minute actual college football game. So. Gotcha. You can still do no, like you can do no huddle where essentially no time will run off the clock. Um, mm-hmm. 
So yeah, it's five minute quarters. How they do that? Okay. But yeah, otherwise, I mean, it's like you're playing a real college football season, especially the dynasty mode with the recruiting and um, all that kind of stuff. And that's what what made it fun. You can do these. You can play like a dynasty online, and you could play like Jared could have all his brothers in the same dynasty. You could have a bunch of your friends in the same dynasty, so you can set up games against each other. Then you're you're recruiting against the recruiting against each other for the same players. So that, that like Jared said, the recruiting gets to be fun because like, you know, the, once the recruiting happens, it, it's kind of fake players, but right. you get going after like these, these fake players and it becomes a big deal. So see now, oh, now you got me, I'm, I'm going to be running out to GameStop or Best Buy tomorrow and I'm going to be picking it up. Yeah. Last thing I'll say as if anybody gives a shit, I landed a gold star recruit. He's called a quote unquote gem. <laughs> he was a wide receiver. Uh, Lorenzo Kirkland, white wide receiver. <laughs> Got him to my program, moved him to running back year one, immediately 99 overall with 98 speed. So you got to find those diamonds in the rough. That's my advice to anybody. I've been riding that guy's coattails for, for the last three, four years now. Uh, he's wow. just getting it done for us. So, wow. so yeah, that's my claim to fame. Lorenzo. What Kirkland, a move. A couple of two-time move. Heisman winner. Great move. Yeah. To a, a receiver recruit to running back. That's that's a bold There's a lot move of that from you Coach Fatale. Like, that's, the stuff, that's the stuff you don't think about, man. You can shift players around. You know, me being a great coach like I am, I saw, oh, <laughs> freshman, 98 speed. Like, let's put this guy running back and let's let's deal with the growing pains uh, right. these first couple of years because he's going to be a star uh, for this program down the line. Well, I will say as the old dude on this program, I sometimes get nostalgic. But when I think that you get to play stuff like this and even the <laughs> younger kids get to do this, when I played, you know, uh, vibrating football player, <laughs> the most boring game ever. So, so a salute to you guys. I, I, I congratulate played that you. Before. I played that before, man. And I, I like, you can't even get it to work right. I'm no. like, how is this even fun? They, the guys don't even move toward the end zone. They go backward. <laughs> So. And then what pong pong came out or pong, uh, pong was yeah. a yeah that came out first the first video game what do you after... think the last video game you played was oh shoot asteroids maybe I don't know <laughs> something like that yeah something so like you never that. you never even got to the PS2s the no. the Xboxes you never got you you were already out by then. I'll be completely honest with you I've been over at people's houses you know younger guys like yourselves and they're playing it and they say hey play so I, I started to jump in a couple times and I said man I am completely <laughs> lost here there is no <laughs> way you know you know how I watch too much TV that's that's my thing so I, I right. can get it a time I can see it you, if you pulled the trigger on college football 25, give it a couple days of a learning curve, man. Next thing you know, I think that might be where you spend your time. Oh God. That's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> yeah. Another addiction to stay down in the man cave. Well, yeah. you know, speaking, speaking of that, and first of all, we'll continue this conversation on catch up, but I should tell everybody, this is episode 321 of the three point podcast presented by the Memorial healthcare wellness center voted Shiawassee County's best health club and gym. Check them out at memorialhealthcare.org for all details. Also want to thank our other starting lineup of partners. They include ALS of Michigan, AZ branding solutions, Detroit jerky, Jacobs Insurance Agency, Corey Shook and Associates Real Estate Services, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, Success Group Mortgage and Servicing, and the Shiawassee County Fair. You kind of teed it up a little bit, Matt, that the fair is right around the corner, August 4th through the 10th. So much going on there, and they were uh, a part of our partner, partner podcast, and uh, it's going to be great. The Shiawassee County Fair is is definitely one of the greatest fairs in the Midwest. They got a lot of good stuff going on there, so looking forward to seeing the people there. And, you know, speaking of outdoor activities like the fair is, uh, I wrapped up my on away trip by uh, going to Frankenmuth, had a little oh, nice. chicken dinner, and nice. then uh, they have a facility I'd never been to before. Uh, it's their amphitheater down by the river, but I saw uh, the Bee Gees tribute band, and holy cow, was this incredible! I mean, there was over five thousand people here. It's all it's all lawn chairs, and you got this hill going down to the amphitheater. I'd never been there before. I've heard about it. it's a free concert. You can bring your own coolers in, and wow. this tr this tribute band was fantastic. I mean, I highly recommend it. You know, there's a lot of you've heard me talk about it before. There's a lot of uh, uh, cities and communities that have these weekly concerts but this is the first time i've been to franklin it was outstanding just a great way to end up the weekend 
Yeah, especially free, bring your own cooler. And then if, if the music is actually enjoyable, that that's kind of a no-brainer. And, and, <laughs> but didn't you over on break, didn't you also go to a Beach Boys concert? Or did yes. we already touch on that uh, a couple of pods ago? Yeah, yeah I think we did that. touch on it. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was July 5th down at Meadowbrook. Oh, okay. but, this, All right. but this Frankenmuth uh, setting was very similar to that. I mean, think about this. I mean, they're fit, what they do is, and all these shows are pretty much the same. Whoever the tribute group is, they come out, they play an hour. Then they take a break. And then they do the 50-50 for the crowd, you know. And they had six 50-50 tickets drawn for 580 bucks each. That's not bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's not bad at all. So, not bad at all. Yeah. So that, that was my thing. In fact, I was talking to the wife about it that, you know, this is kind of settling into my retirement plan now. You know, summertime, <laughs> go to some of these concerts, outdoor concerts. It's awesome. It's fun. Go to some Tiger games, right? And then hang out with the, the grandkids as much as we can. And it's kind of that way throughout the season. Fall season, maybe see the grandkids some, but it's football, <laughs> football, football, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Winter time, you know, you got uh, uh, basketball. You got to figure some out for the winter. I think you got to figure some out for the winter. I would say that's where your retirement. You go, you go usually go on there. a vacation or two. Yeah. yeah, that but, might it might yeah is that is that basically where you were going with the that's winter? where I was going to go yeah in the winter time we'll definitely take a, a warm weather vacation somewhere for two or three weeks you know, and then live it up while I still can I was talking to my wife the other day you know you start counting down the years when you do the math <laughs> it's not that far she was on the opposite side so she actually had the glass half full I'm looking at it okay. going well, yeah, that's yeah, depressing man why it, it can be what? if you're a depressed person I'm not what? depressed but <laughs> well if you don't mind me what are you like you're like are you saying like oh I'm 90 years old count back from there or I guess what well, do you no, mean well like look at it I'm 68 down. I'm 68 let's say conservatively my parents made it both to 92 but let's just say 88 that's 20 years 20 years goes by 20 years in a flash. Quick. well especially it's, when you think about like you know you just recently retired how quick did your work life go like that that's just a whole we could do a whole podcast on that on, on how messed up it is you work 40 50 hours a week for 50 years of your life just to have 20 years of retirement to enjoy right. And that that's hopefully you're healthy enough to actually enjoy retirement, you know? Yeah. So well, you it, know, that's, it is kind of crazy. That's the key, man. Hopefully your parents are healthy, you know, but yeah. I'm, I'm starting to have my aches and pains. I mean, I got to get another hip replaced down the road here. Had to go get a shot in it. I broke my finger in my garage door. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me a quick story on that one? Cause that, that was, that's you. So we, we, I, I didn't even mention this in the cornhole. He was, he was out of the tournament. He was on the IL. He couldn't on play the because of the injured, injured. I finger. was. <laughs> Well, it was my right hand and my middle finger. So, you know, that, that's important. You can't throw. Yeah. You can't throw. So, wow. Yeah. You, you made it to a podcast right after a hip surgery, but you couldn't fight through for a cornhole tournament. <laughs> no, I might as well just give him my five buck entry fee. Yeah. <laughs> but but if Jared was leading to the fact, yeah, I, yeah, it was yeah. just stupidity on myself. You know, my garage doors are power operated, but the one door came off the track. So I had to get to my lawnmower. So push the door up, you know, disconnect it, push the door up. And when I brought the lawnmower back in, it was kind of sticking a little bit. And I put my fingers in the crack oh. and it just came down. The two panels just completely crushed my finger at the top. When I, I was able to push it back up with my left hand and I looked at my finger and it had this big gash in it. And I walked in the house, my wife was in the bathtub and I just said, Hey, uh, don't panic, but I think I got to go to ER. So I, I go to urgent care. They put in five stitches. I check it out later that night and three of the five stitches are already pulled out because oh. the, the finger was swelled up, swelling. you know? Yep. So they sent me to get an x-ray and sure as hell broken finger. So do they give you painkillers or anything? I mean, that sounds painful, man. Yeah. I've got some extra special Tylenol type, you know, but it, it's not too bad right now, but the, the fingernails completely gone. I mean, it's just yeah. completely black, but nobody cares about that. That's hey, I do have a question for you guys before we move on and talk some other stuff. Uh, you know, we've always talked about this three generation thing, right? And I was sitting at the concert and I'm thinking, man, there's a lot of old dudes here. And uh, I'm thinking, I think a lot of them are the Woodstock generation. And I just missed the Woodstock generation. I, you know, I was within five years, I would say. I graduated in 74, Woodstock was 69. But I would say watching the Bee Gees, I was Woodstock, disco, you know that in that era right kind of in the middle what would you guys say you would be when it comes to music what kind what generation would you be grunge mat uh, hip-hop right. how would you describe yourself 
I mean, I, I think 90s was definitely a pretty good mix because you're right, the grunge and just like rock, you know, like the Chili Peppers, like the Foo Fighters, obviously Nirvana in the, in the grunge scene, Pearl, Pearl Jam and, right. and all that. But hip hop and rap was becoming a really big deal. Mm-hmm. And really, like, if we're being honest, 90s was the boy band era, too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. You know, with New Kids on the Block kind of got it going. Backstreet Boys and Sync, obviously, the two big ones. So 90s was kind of a really big mix. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy now how it's 20, 30 years ago. So they are a lot of that music lands on the classic rock stations when you listen to <laughs> right. them, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I was I was thinking because I still listen to classic rock. I, I grew up listening to classic rock, you know, the music my parents right. listen to. So I'll be listening to that sometimes and I'll turn mine on. And sometimes I think like the the music that I grew up with, sometimes I think this isn't as there there is stuff that is timeless, but like classic rock will be good music like mm-hmm. forever. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like you can always turn on classic rock no matter what setting. If you're at a campfire, if you're out at the pool, if you're just hanging out at home, working out, you know, whatever you're doing. And sometimes I, I turn on like certain music from that I grew up listening to. And it's like, I don't think I'd want to play this for my kids, <laughs> like you know, because yeah. whether it's the language or whether it's the content or, you know, whatever. So sometimes I just think like, man, I don't know how, like how long my music will kind of like stick well, around. Listen you know? to a lot of like Britney Spears stuff. It's like, I don't, it's really not that. I don't know. In my opinion, some of those songs are like, man, this is bad. Right. Like, um, I mean, I would consider your generation. It's like Timberlake, Beyonce, Eminem. Um who are some of the other heavy hitters you would consider your kind of era, Matt? Yeah, I mean, those those are some of the big ones. And then, like I said, some of the bands and just there, there's a slew of hip hop artists, but or rap. And right, when you go back and listen to it, it's like pretty vulgar stuff. It <laughs> is. Like, you know, you're, you're kind of like, oh, this is why my parents didn't want me listening to this when I was growing <laughs> up. Oh, OK. But I mean, then there's still a lot of really good rock stuff that I was, I was listening, you know, sure. like Foo Fighters and Red Hot, Red Chili, Hot Peppers Chili Peppers. And yeah. Pearl Jam and a lot of these other bands that are still touring. And it's like, okay, these are the ones that are going to make it through generations. Some right. of the other stuff, eh, not so much. Well, you know, I'm a big serious XM subscriber and listener. You know, it's funny. They have their classic rock. I say the Woodstock generation, that's classic vinyl. Then they have right. classic rewind, which is more the rock like you're talking about, Pearl Jam and those. They'll yeah. play that music. So they have two separate classic rock stations that I go back and forth on. Now, how about you, Jared? What would you categorize your I've- your generation? I, I mean, I, I guess my brain goes to like who were the big artists during my time. I, I, yeah. It's Taylor Swift, okay, Drake, Post Malone. Um, man, who are the other kind of? I mean, it, it depends on like if you're big into country, obviously that takes you that way. If right. you're big into hip hop, like Kendrick Lamar would probably be one that people are into, or like Lil Wayne. I would say, right. maybe was, I would say Lil Wayne you know, is so, more your era. I think that right. was kind of the tail end. Like Lil Wayne's maybe the last kind of guy you can claim. Right. Um, Jay Z is a part of your crew as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it is more. There's not really that rock genre. I, I don't no. know who would fill that mold. Really. Uh, it, it is mostly hip hop artists and pop artists. Yeah, it's kind of evolved. If you want the rock sound, it's really country. You know, right. different country bands play a lot more rock oriented music than they used to. You know, it used to be the right. steel guitar twangy stuff. You know, it's right. not so much that way anymore. It's kind of overtaken. Uh, the, the classic rock and roll, which but, I which I will say kind of with this conversation, I'm, I, I don't remember if we've talked about this. I'm sure we have. I know you're a big Post Malone fan. I, I definitely am, too. And I, I think you've said, Ted, you like some of his stuff, too. Oh, I'm a big Post Malone fan, believe it or not. I mean, I like his music. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the album he has coming out, he's just teasing. He's just dropping little teasers left and right with all the, you know, he did a song with Morgan Wallen, Luke Combs. Blake Shelton, like all these people he's doing these songs with, that album is going to be pretty great. I, I know some of the, I've seen some of the like diehard country fans aren't happy about it because they're like, Post Malone's not a country artist. You know, he, he right. shouldn't be doing a country album. It's like, dude, who cares? Just enjoy the music. But talking about Super Bowl halftime, Post Malone's got to be up there one of these years. And the next three to five years, maybe, maybe yeah. even next year, you know, who knows? But He's got to be one of those up there. I would think so. You would think. Well, sorry, guys. I didn't mean to put you on the spot there, but that worked out okay. I was just thinking about that when I was at the concert, you know, just sitting back going, man, life's pretty good right here Sunday night. 
<laughs> got on away in the books and uh, Frankenmuth at a concert and then head home to start the week. And I don't even have to worry about the Sunday scaries, as Jared would call it. Right. Don't have to worry Sunday about work scaries. on Monday. Coming back from Ottawa, man, and they're the worst every year. That's the worst Sunday scaries of the year. Because what? That's a few hour drive, so you're yeah, enjoying your you're enjoying your trip, but the whole drive back, you're just like. Uh, then you got to unpack your car. You're you're literally exhausted. You've slept terrible all week. Yeah. So yeah, it's it sucked, man. But we're back in the swing of things. Uh, before we move on, I mean, everybody probably wants to know about your golf game. You golfed a few times up there. How'd you, how'd you hit them? Terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, yeah. I don't play, you know, I'm thinking about like two, three years ago, I was playing 75 times in a summer. Right. I've maybe played five times, five to eight times this year. Terrible. I think I said once, like, this is probably my last round of the year. <laughs> that that course up there, Black Lake, my God, is it impossible. It, it is so hard. <laughs> Every year I'm reminded of how hard it is. Every year you think it's the year where you're going to figure that course out. It, it's a million miles long. Bunkers everywhere, trees everywhere, water everywhere. <laughs> the greens are all elevated. Uh, it, it's just, it, it, it's a doozy of a round. And usually it, it, it kind of depends, depending on how I play this weekend, it either is the last round of the year or it's like, <laughs> man, I can't wait to golf for the next two months. Like, right. let's squeeze every drop out of this season. So it was, it was a shitty weekend for golf. All right. Well, I, I'm That'll sorry I asked. <laughs> yeah, right. it's still fun i still it always is right, right. Those guys that we i never get to say usually that's our time to play every year but my yeah. god sometimes when you drop 85 dollars in a round you wish you would have played a little better right. right well great catching up with you guys uh, we'll take a short break and we'll see what's going on in the sports world including the olympics we'll be right back after this all right guys where do you want to start in the olympics i mean there's some good stuff already it's still fairly early in the uh the proceedings but uh it's off to a pretty good start yeah, I mean, U.S. is doing really well, obviously, winning in a lot of the events that they've been expected to, a lot of gymnastics, mm -hmm. swimming, and, you know, some stuff like that. I did see, we, we shared it on our Facebook page. I, I actually happened to be watching when it happened in, in rugby. They had an oh, insane upset in Australia. Uh, the U.S. women's rugby team won bronze. Basically, I, I saw, you know, because obviously I don't, I've seen rugby, but I'm not going to act like I know that much about rugby. But basically what they did, they scored a, a length of the field. I don't even think it's called a touchdown, whatever it is, a score <laughs> at the buzzer. And I saw people say this is the equivalent of someone scoring a 99-yard touchdown in a football game at the exactly. buzzer to win the yeah. game is essentially how they won the bronze medal over an Australia team that was heavily favored. So, that you know, stuff like that's cool. Uh, yesterday or the other morning, uh, before I went into work, I just started flipping around. I was watching some windsurfing. I was watching some equestrian, some archery. And, you know, it, you're always kind of reminded of like when the Olympics roll around that, like, I'm never going to watch any of this stuff probably for four more years, exactly. but you know, I'm sitting there watching it. I'm like, this is super cool. Like the windsurfing was insane. How fast these dudes were going on these little boats and how they were like, jumping around the boat to like make it turn and stuff like it, it's just crazy to think like there's people out there that good at all these random sports i mean the best in the world at all these random sports and events and obviously yeah. beach volleyball beach volleyball is always fun to watch i don't care who's playing i'm gonna watch that but it, it's fun. volleyball it's very good time. is right underneath the eiffel tower it's an right. awesome setup i mean Wow. Um, what I love about the Olympics, and I think I said a few weeks ago I didn't like the Olympics. I really do love it. I mean, the the tradition outside of the World Cup, it's the ultimate tradition in sports. Uh, it, it really is, in my opinion. Every country participates, whether you're warring, whether you're not. Like it, it that really is kind of unbelievable. It, do you guys know? Is there any that sit out? Like, aren't there some that maybe boycott it? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know any that did. There have been. There have. I, been, I don't know right. if there were any this year that did. Yeah. I mean, if, a couple if, of if, my complaints with the, the Olympics, though, um, the medal count, I, it seems like it should be a bigger deal. Like, it seems like at the end of the Olympics, there should be like a, a goal, like a winning team and a silver and a bronze. Why is that not a bigger deal? Keeping hmm. track of the medals and making it some big thing at the end of the, the Olympics, a closing ceremony. I guess I don't understand. That seems like a big missed opportunity to me. Um, and then so as like, we knew, you, was, you would have you would have like the ultimate gold medal. If, right, if whatever what? country won the, the most, the country you want to know who's like won the most Olympics. Who's the best country in sports? Like, isn't that the whole purpose? It just okay. seems like a miss. I know we keep track of the medals, but there should be more to it. 
in my opinion, it just seems like a big missed opportunity. Why would we not do that? It seems dumb. Right. Um, and then the number two thing, we knew this was going to be an issue. As soon as we heard it was going to be in a Peacock app. I thought maybe, maybe, just maybe, they would follow the March Madness Live uh, setup, which is immaculately, perfectly executed TV watching. To find any of these events, it's impossible. Yeah. To mm-hmm. switch back and forth between events is impossible. Mm-hmm. You have to literally basically back out of the app almost to get to something else. Like It should just be a you press the down arrow on your remote. Now I have the like almost like a like a viewing guide, and I can just swap through the channels. It's it it sucks yeah. how it's set up. Have you guys noticed that as well? Are you guys on the Peacock app watching this stuff? No, I'm on I'm on my cable and just watch it on eight, on NBC during the day. But I do have the app, and I know exactly what you're saying because that's again why I'm the dinosaur sticking with my cable. The convenience of it, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's been nice, but then there's been times that I wanted to watch it like windsurfing right, and some right. other stuff, and that's on the app. But, right, it's very clunky, and it, it should just be a menu. Here's the events. Watch them. And it, it'll even sometimes say that they're live, so you go to it, but then it's just like a panel that says, like, resuming shortly or something like that. So right. it's just – it's very clunky, but, you know, it's kind of where we're at, I guess. The, the two elite apps, the Masters app, and March Madness Live. I, I mean, I don't know a thing or two. I don't know anything about, you know, companies or how they're run. I mean, they almost need to just hire somebody like you, Ted, like a common sense, like viewer <laughs> oh, who has you. watched a lot of TV, like get you in these boardrooms, like they're, they're going over all the money and logistics. Like, Hey, how user friendly is this to switch right, back and forth? Right. We can spend all this money on Peacock. Like, let's make sure we can watch this stuff easily. That's my so that's my two cent complaint. But what a great what I love about the Olympics is whatever event you guys talk about, how you can watch the most random stuff, you just drop in on this basically this person's life in the biggest moment where they're about to do this, this you know, 30 second swim race, and you know they've trained their entire life like for this moment. And I just like that is just such a rush to watch. So I appreciate it. That's what I love about it. But the the basketball has been is the number one event for me year after year. Um, the team, it's been the big storyline has been LeBron. I mean, he's yeah. he's taken. We talked a few weeks ago. Is Ant Edwards the the alpha who's going to take over? No, it's clearly this team is still LeBron, Steph Curry, and KD's team. I mean, Kevin Durant, the ultimate Olympian. He's so much fun to watch when there's no pressure on him to like get it done. One man army uh, in the NBA when he's just a part of a basketball team like this, where he can, you, he can just focus on his strengths, shooting from all over the court seven foot guy on defense uh you know just plays so well in olympic style hoops it's fun to watch him play I mean, he started the game what eight for eight the other day um but the yeah. thing that i'm gonna say i do think we are headed for a tough lesson next olympics i think we're gonna win the gold this year because you still have those key guys lebron steph kd anthony davis i'm not sure if he'll be healthy enough to play in four years but i really do think that we are missing the boat on how to build this team you need to do what other countries are doing. The talent gap has shrunk so much. I'm going to mess up the number, but I think the stat is something like the dream team played nine pro players during their run. And I think somebody knows this better than me. One of you guys, hopefully like 61. Yeah. 61 is what this team is going to face. Yeah. I mean, you saw it's like South Sudan. I mean, what an inspired team. They don't even have an indoor basketball court in their country and they're still damn good. They should have probably beat the USA in that exhibition game. It wasn't for LeBron. Right. We need to assign players, even if it's not the top-notch players, to play the next three summers leading up to our to the Olympics in 2028. I really think they need to do that because once these key guys like LeBron move on, I think it's going to be a, a wake-up call when Victor Wembanyama in four years is <laughs> maybe the best player in the NBA. Uh, Jokic is still going to be there. Like I just really think they need to make this move now before they have to learn a hard lesson like we did in 2004. What do you guys think? Do you think that it's – we're just always going to win the Olympics, or do you see that happening down the line, like really sooner rather than later? Well, well, I personally find it uh, it would be hard if the if the USA always puts their twelve best NBA players against any other country. You know, you got some superstars in some of these other countries. We've talked about it before, like Germany and Serbia. Look what they did to Serbia. You got to you got to have a full roster of NBA type of talent to match these guys. So I'm not as worried as you are on this. Uh, 2004 was just, it was just, they didn't have their best team. They just didn't. Yeah. 2004, like some of the best players like Shaq, Kobe, and some of the other top players didn't play for different reasons. So yeah, they won bronze. Um, I mean, I think it would take 
Wimbenyana turning out to be the player everyone thinks he's going to be. But right, when you Serbia's starting five could probably compete with the U.S., but yeah. once you get to the bench, that's where it really starts to fall off. Canada could be interesting because Canada's whole roster – is NBA players, right? Whether, whether they're all, you know, top notch or whatever, who cares? They're all NBA players. So Canada could be a tough test. There's a couple other teams that could give them a little bit of a run, but right, right now, we, those three players, when you have Durant, Steph and LeBron, as long as they're healthy and playing and Anthony Davis is actually playing really well right now too, they're going to be tough to beat this year. So yeah, I, I remember when, when Kobe finally committed back in like 2006 or 2007 to play, that was kind of part of the, like, deal if you're going right. to play in the olympics you have to play the year before in the world championships like it's mm -hmm. a requirement unless there's probably like a major injury or you know something like that but because right you, you can see in these teams like south sudan or some of these other teams that this is all they do all they do is play together that, that goes a long way in these games this u.s team yeah the, the talent's insane but they've practiced like three times together, had a couple exhibition games, and now they got to go out there and try and win a gold medal. Like that's not as easy as you think it is. So yeah, maybe at some point you have to almost like sign a contract and say, if you want to play in the Olympics, you need to at least commit to two years, play in the previous year's world championships. So I don't know if there still is something like that. You know, I'm not sure because U S lost in the world championships last summer and it was a completely different roster. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what the deal is exactly, but no, I, I the women's game, I, I watched yesterday, the women played, they played Japan. And I mean, it, the women are just going to run away with a gold medal for the basketball, the men though. I mean, uh, we're recording Tuesday night. They play tomorrow at three. Um, they play South Sudan again. They should win for sure, they'll, but they'll you know, spank them. they'll spank them. Right, they'll they'll get a little think, bit of a game. How can you say that though? How can that was an that? exhibition game. They, they weren't into it. It's <laughs> right. the Olympics now. It's the Olympics. It's game uh, yeah, time. Yeah, I mean man. they're definitely going to be awake. They probably sleptwalk at the start of that South Sudan game. Yeah, but this I tell you what, this South Sudan squad is a fun squad, mm -hmm. loaded with athletic wings. I mean, yeah. I said it a second ago. Think about it. They don't have an indoor court in <laughs> South Sudan. A lot of these players go to Australia or whatever in prep schools when they grow up. But my God, yeah, I, I mean, they really seem to have some magic going where I wouldn't be surprised if they end up winning a bronze medal, maybe even a silver medal wow. uh, when it's all said and done. One thing, one final thing I'll say about Team USA, uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm happy to see that Joel Embiid, uh, happy yeah. is maybe not the right word, you know, but you know what I am? I'm happy to see Joel <laughs> right. Embiid has been struggling, man. I mean, he's just a losing player. The fact that he is competing for MVPs with Jokic, my lord. Hopefully that never happens again. I know he puts up big numbers. How many times in a row do we have to watch him get bowed out in the playoffs? Usually some excuse. He's always hurt. Blames it on Ben Simmons when they lost a couple years ago. Right. I mean, the plus minus tells all the story you need to know. I mean, I think they were like even with Serbia when he's on the floor and like plus 30 or something like that when he's off the right. floor. It's Give me Tyson Chandler over this guy any day of the week. Anthony Davis, yeah. his stock has gone way up. We're seeing yeah. how good of a player he really is in these Olympic games. I love watching these games, and I love the rules that the FIBA plays by. I just yeah. everything about it is great. But Joel Embiid, good lord, a little bit of a wake up call for him. Hopefully, I, I wish I want one friend of the podcast, Miggy Incognito, who we we've referenced before. He he replied to a tweet a day or two ago that I, I threw out there about same thing you just said. How much he likes the FIBA style of basketball wishes the NBA would go that route. And I agree. Yeah, It's just a much faster game. They don't call every little touch foul. You know, there's a couple other little rules. Like you can grab the ball off the rim. That kind of yep. keeps things moving. Um, you know, it's just shorter quarters, make it a little faster pace and everything. It's not all about, you know, like you see in the NBA first half teams will go up 30 Second half, though, the other team battles back because, you know, the, the game kind of sets up that you can do that. And it's just not like that in FIBA basketball. So, no, it, it's a fun watch. And, you know, you see a dude like Durant can just light it up like crazy. So I'll be excited to see them, see them yeah. hopefully win gold. You know, this might be old news by the time this airs, but uh, also it was interesting to me that uh, Steve Kerr couldn't find any minutes at all for Jason Tatum. I mean, well, think about goodness. it. Where, I mean, at some point you got to make, I, I agree with it, dude. Okay. What is, what is Jason Tatum giving you that Kevin Durant's not giving you? Right? You know, but it's just odd, you know, it I mean, is. It, he's it's a great a funny, player. Well, think about it. It's like, he's got two other players on the cell. He's getting paid all this money. And the two kind of role, almost role players are, are playing t a lot more than he is uh, yeah, right. in white and drew holiday. So it's, it is a funny storyline. You got to think he's definitely a little bit upset about it, but. 
I was kind of wondering if Steve Kerr w- was the guy for the job. I think that's a big time move by him. Hey, I don't yeah. care what you won. Flat out, you're not Kevin Durant. So we're right. going to play Kevin Durant as much as we can. I, what do you, do you guys hate that? Or I think it's a good move. I kind of, I, I thought it was funny more than anything because Tatum is first team all NBA. So right. in, in theory, he's one of the five best guys in the NBA. But sometimes Kerr even said, like, sometimes you have to play guys like Derek White drew holiday to play defense you know next to lebron and steph and stuff like that so sometimes tatum might not really fit in the game he's gonna at some point probably tomorrow for probably sure gonna, he's gonna play 20 minutes and probably score 15 points or something stupid but it, yeah. it was kind of crazy yeah i didn't lose any sleep over but it, i did right. find it kind of odd that yeah. you like you well, said first first team all nba and not a, not a minute Right. <laughs> it's coach's funny, decision. I, I, well, this is just how good it shows how good the Celtics are, I, yeah. in my opinion. He, he Tatum is a damn good player, um, but Kevin Durant is a top ten player of all time. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I he's seven foot tall, and yeah. he and he and he's a spot up shooter like you wouldn't believe. Which Tatum maybe isn't quite the same shooter. So yeah. right. now, do both you guys find basketball to be your go to sport in the Olympics? Because myself. I really am drawn to gymnastics, both the women and the men. I mean, there, there's been some fantastic performances. The women won the, the team gold. And, man, the men picking up the bronze, but I don't know if you had a chance to watch it. It was uh, it was must-watch TV, the way they celebrated, the way they came through in the clutch to get that bronze. It was something else. And, you know, they are just unbelievable athletes. It's just yeah. incredible what they can do. Mind-boggling. It, it, really, it really is because what the U.S. team had the the it was their first medal since like was it 08? It's been quite a while. It's been a long time, yeah. It might have even been before that, but it's their first medal in quite a long time in the team team event. And what they basically had the how do you pronounce it the pommel horse the pommel horse. Oh, I love that um, man. They had yeah, they, Clark, they, they, Kent, was, Clark Kent right won like it for him at the end. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the only event that he did. He is like legit a specialist. We need yep. you for this event, and that's it. And he came through in the clutch and, yeah, won them a medal. It's, it was pretty it, awesome. It was. But do you guys have a favorite sport yeah. other than basketball? Oh, you know, you know, I checked out beach some of the – volleyball, I mean, probably. Volleyball, beach volleyball. Yeah. No, no, I need to watch more. I mean, swimming. I tell you what, the swimming, swimming. race, you wouldn't That's think intense. it'd be fun, but it is intense when you actually – like they're all within like one stroke of each other, like a meter of each other. It's great – or half, whatever, whatever the metric is. Right. It's always neck and neck to the end. So I, I, I've always liked swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Swimming's crazy. The energy is just insane, especially the short races, the hundred meter type stuff, the kind of sprints. Like I saw Katie Ledecky and her, her like bread and butter event, the 1500 that she just dominated, blew, blows people away, like absolutely blows people away in those. Um, but yeah, the, the swimming events are fun. I, I saw an interview two weeks ago now to, it was before the Olympics. Um, Michael Phelps was on Pat McAfee. Right. And he was talking about the Olympics. It was a really good interview. If it's, um, I would recommend going to YouTube or something and finding Michael yeah. Phelps on McAfee. It was interesting. But um, it's just, Jared, you were talking about these people, these athletes. You tune in, and it's these people who spend their whole life dedicated to this one sport, one or two sports. And, you know, they only get to compete every four years, you know, for the Olympics. Obviously, some you have the world championships and some other stuff. But for the Olympics, every four years, and it, it's just kind of crazy to think about. And Phelps was talking about it um, with McAfee, and they were saying how kind of crazy Olympians are because, like, one little slip, one little slip up, and your whole four years of training could be out the window. He was saying his first Olympics, when he left Olympic Village to go check in for his first race, he grabbed his roommate's credential and when he got there to check in, they were like, no, that's not your credential. You have to go back and get yours. So now his whole routine is thrown oh, off. He has fun. to go back yeah. to his hotel, get his, you know, athletes at that level are so like they do the oh, same yeah. routine and by the second. Right. Yes. And he's and he was just saying him and McAfee, they were talking about like, what if you just kind of sleep bad the night before? Or what if, you know, you eat something and it kind of messes with your stomach or, you know, like the smallest thing could throw it you know, your whole performance off, especially when in swimming, it's like 10th of a second, 10th of a second. It's not football where it's like, you know, you can maybe have 95% of your game. Doesn't matter. Swimming. You need, you need to, you need to have your best race of your life. That's what I love about it. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's what I kind of forgot when we talked about it a few weeks ago. It's the best. It it really, like I said, I mean, do you guys not agree with the whole medal count? I mean, Am I crazy? Why is that not a thing? I never I mean, thought I about they, it. It is kind yeah. of a thing, but they don't give out a, a country right. award, you know? 
yeah, why? I, I, why? Good question. I, t- I, I tend to agree I, with what you're saying. Why not? I feel like they kind of announce. I mean, they'd have to almost come up with like a, a point system or something. Like you get so many points for the gold, for so many bronze, for the right. silver, so many, right? Something like that. But because yeah, we're, what they do right now, they do have like if you look at the chart online, it'll say total medals, then it'll say how many gold, hold right, gold, right. silver, bronze. But that's Jared. That's actually not a bad thought. So I agree, I tend to agree with you. It would just it would it would cause more world wars, is what it would do. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably. I wonder, like, well, maybe three to five countries would actually have a chance of winning that right. year to year. Usually, U.S. and China are pretty much going right. back and forth, probably. But hey, I don't care. I'm a part of the U.S. I want to <laughs> win those medals. So. That's right. Well, if you didn't get a chance to see, which by now you probably have, that rugby finish was incredible. Was cool. uh, for me, American football all the way but I'd, I'd i'd rather watch rugby than soccer myself personally there's some nothing, good not, a, not a bad diss at soccer but right. that rugby is something else with limited pads no helmets i mean almost no pads and it's just constant movement constant yep. action it is crazy it's wild let's take a real short pause here and be back with some more sports here on three point podcast all right guys we won't talk about it long but uh mlb had their trade <clears> deadline <throat> today the big topic was for the Tiger fans anyway. Are they going to trade Tarek Skubal? And uh, they didn't. They traded Flaherty to the Dodgers. Kind of a ho hum transaction deal for the Tigers. I personally, I'm not too worked up about it. I'm glad they didn't trade Skubal myself. I mean, yeah. yeah, they had him out there kind of as bait to see what kind of interest they would get for some really talented players, but they didn't get a good enough offer. I'm glad he's. You know, he's a top starter in baseball, build a team around him. But do you guys have any thoughts on that at all? Well, yeah, if, if he keeps pitching the way that he is, he's probably going to win the Cy Young this year. So any anyone, if you weren't getting the top three or four prospects from a team, mm-hmm. then yes, there's no reason to trade him because, yeah, you can build a team around him. The Tigers have three or four or five players that are legitimate. Obviously, Riley Green being one of them, a couple other guys who you can kind of build around. Tarek Skubal also being one of them. So if you weren't getting an absolute no-brainer offer from the Orioles or the Yankees or the Dodgers, whoever, then yeah, I'm glad they said no because what they got for Flaherty from the Dodgers was like the number eight and number 22 prospect in the Dodgers farm system. So it's a little bit of a ho-hum. You know, you never know how these prospects are going to pan out. They Who knows? Three, four years, they might be all-stars. But yeah. You know, he, he was on a one-year deal, so if you weren't going to re-sign him this offseason anyway, then at least you got something back. But I, yeah, I'm just glad I'm glad they didn't trade Scooble and get, like, trash bags in return, you know? Exactly. And one of the players that you're talking about, he's a shortstop, was the number one pick by the Yankees a couple of years ago. And looks looking at his minor league numbers, not, not too bad. He's got some bang with the bat, 13 right. homers. Um, you know, and let's face it. I mean, he might be Jared's favorite Tiger, but Baez has got to go. I mean, he had a couple home runs this weekend, but he's terrible. He cannot he's hit bad. anymore. Well, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get that next shortstop in there. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's that contract. No one wants that bias contract. Nobody will take it. Just cut him. <laughs> it, here's what I, I it, listen, I, Tigers fans, they're, it's the worst fan base in sports. I honestly do think that. Think no matter what pissed. they do, they're pissed. No matter what happens, they're pissed. No matter – Scott Harris could have traded for Aaron Judge and, and John, John Carlos Stanton for whatever, and they probably still would have hated it. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because of, like, Moneyball. Everybody thinks they're like Billy Bean nowadays with these <laughs> baseball. I'm new to the sport, and that's just like my takeaway. Everybody's a genius, and and, and and this is in other sports as well, but I don't know, something about baseball, because there's these unknown prospects where really nobody knows anything, everybody's an expert. Everybody knows exactly what they should do. Uh, I, I I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. it, it time will tell. I mean, that's such a lame thing to say, but like you said, these prospects, you really never know. Right. Um, it, 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 it seemed like for a while there they really weren't going to get a deal done. It felt like it was at the buzzer uh, of the deadline that they got Flaherty through. So I liked Flaherty. I mean, what a fun little player for the time we had him. Just uh, strikeout king. Uh, and I always loved the single-digit pitcher number. Just had some swag about him. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm going to have fond memories of this you know brief stint we had with him uh, And now that he's on the you know, quote-unquote brighter pastures. So right. we'll see. Well, I mean, Cole Keith, the, the big storyline with them is that Cole Keith's finally kind of seeming to really – pick up some steam lately and, and really turning into quite the player. So, yeah. Well, that's the thing. If, if he can keep progressing, 
to me, like even talking to some friends, he seems like he might be the first baseman of the future. Hopefully right. Torkelson does that end up coming through, you know, with his, this triple A stint, but it seems like you might slide Keith over to first base. Maybe Torkelson will be um, DH Contributor, right. first baseman. Obviously Riley green is a stud. And then you got Tarek Skubal. I mean, there's your core there. There's exactly. your kind of core of players right there. It Build. just, they, they keep drafting high schoolers. So it's just like, it seems like they're building for five years from now. And it's like, all right, at some point, like let's spend some money, not on high V bias. Let's spend some money right. on guys that are ready to play and win right now. Cause you're right. The I mean, you're in the AL. There's no real salary cap. So spend some money and get a couple good yeah. free agents and solidify that team. Cause I really don't, I, I've talked about it before. I'm a huge tiger fan. I don't think they're that far out of it. If they keep their core pitching staff you know, healthy. Right. And you know who I can't wait. I mean, I don't know if you got, but Jackson Job. <laughs> this right, guy yeah. has been lighting up the minors. And he he's like, he, there's something like dynamic about him. He, he's like, he's not the tallest guy. He's kind of short. His dad was like a professional golfer. Um, he's got crazy like movement on his pitches. He just, I, I can't wait to see him get to the pros. I really think as long as he stays healthy, I mean, that's a big thing with a lot of these pitchers, right. but. He right. seems like a, a gem of a pitching prospect coming through the ranks sooner rather than later. And, and who's the uh, who's who's the young kid they drafted number one last year? That's I think is an infielder. He was a high school Max kid, but he's Clark. doing doing yeah. Max Clark. He's he's doing outfielder. pretty good. He just moved up to the White Caps. He's an outfielder. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I've heard young. he's like I've heard he's not, he's a great player too. I mean, it, he's still so young. He's still got a couple right. key years coming up. But exactly from what I've been hearing, he's been progressing at at, at a good pace. So yep. That's just that's what makes the the experts or the the Tigers fans that that Jared hates. That's what makes them mad because you see the players that are picked ahead of him already right. in the major leagues contributing, or you right. see like the guys that they got in the Verlander trade. None of them are even like in right. the league anymore. So like right. you know, three four years from now when you revisit this stuff, that's what makes you like, what the heck were we doing? But you're kind of you're just going off of projections. I mean, some some of the stuff you have. I mean, yeah, there's guys like Mike Trout. You know they're going to be all stars. Bryce Harper. You know they're going Bryce to be all stars. Right. But right, otherwise you don't know what some of these guys are going to be. You're just taking a shot. Casey Mize was supposed to be a no brainer number one pick, and he just he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So right. you just never know. Yeah. Well, that's our baseball talk for now. Tigers are still in the wild card chase, but uh, don't count on it. Uh, it is, you know, we are creeping that's quite, up. That's quite the way to end a segment. They're yeah. still in the wild, but don't count on it. <laughs> uh, you know, we are creeping up on football season, fellas. And, you know, there's a game this week. I know, I know. The uh, Hall of Fame game, right? Yep. I can't wait. But, you know, I we got the. Pro start and exhibition season. The the Big Ten with their new format is going to be getting together. They had their uh, media day at, in Indianapolis. Yeah. I mean, we're starting to feel it, aren't we? Almost there. I mean, football yeah. season's here. I mean, Allen Allen Park. I'm surprised, Ted, you haven't been down to Allen Park yet this summer. And you know, you're seeing all the highlights. Everyone's loving all the highlights oh, yeah, of training right. camp. All the touchdowns. Yeah. All the the interceptions from quarterbacks and all these highlights, the fights and everything happening up. at training camp. It really is the time of year where it's like, let's just start playing. All right. right. <laughs> Practice is done. Let's just start playing. Cause now you're seeing like so many guys now are starting to opt out of preseason games, mm -hmm. you know, maybe, maybe because of health reasons, but you know, so it's like, let's just get to the real I, games, but it gets you hyped up. I hate the preseason, man. It's yeah. like, it's the worst type of teaser. It, it, you, I honestly don't ever watch the games. I, it's just like, it's just, it's like the worst like period of the calendar. Honestly, it's like, it's football season, but it's also not quite yet. So I right. just got to get through these next few weeks and get us to that first week. Uh, I, I put together real quick. I'll rattle through them quick. Kind of yeah. my favorite storylines for NFL this year. Um, and then I think when we do Ted entertainment tonight, we'll, we got to touch on Michigan football just a little mm -hmm. tease for that. I mean, they got a Connor Stallions documentary coming oh, out yeah. right? uh, first week of college football season. So real quick, number one, I mean, this, and I think this is a lot of people's, uh, the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. To me, the Jets are the ultimate kind of mirage uh, of a great program, you know, team, culture. I really think they have some talent, but I wasn't impressed with Robert Sala uh, in hard knocks last year. Mm -hmm. And I think as long as he's there, they're kind of putting everything on Aaron Rodgers when really he's like, yeah, he's like probably a top 15 quarterback, but he's not the 2012 Aaron Rodgers who's basically a one-man offense and is going to get you to the playoffs, win you a division every single year, year in and year out. 
I don't think he's going to be that. But I think no matter what happens with that squad, whether they light it up, I hope they light it up. I just don't think they will. Whether they light it up and Aaron Rodgers is great or whether they really struggle, whether Aaron Rodgers gets hurt hurt again, no matter what happens with the Jets, it's the number one story it's in the NFL story, this year. Yeah. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, it's a fun story. I mean, even if you like Rodgers or don't like him, it, it's an in, interesting to see what's going to happen. He's one that's not playing in the preseason, obviously, coming off that injury. Um, but, yeah, you want to see how it's going to play out because they haven't won a Super Bowl since Ted was wishing that he went to Woodstock. So it's been <laughs> 50 right. years or whatever. So, I mean. Joe Willie you know, Namath. Right. I mean, it, they're kind of that, like, franchise that people act like they're – Maybe people don't act like they're quite the Patriots, but you know they're the Jets, and it's like you guys haven't won a Super Bowl in fifty years. The Lions right. are the Lions are closer than you guys are. So right, yeah. Uh, my number two, uh, another one I can't wait for. This is kind of off the field. Tom Brady in the booth. I, I can't wait to see what he's going to be like. Uh, his first game is going to be on September eighth at four twenty five. Browns versus Cowboys. Will he be good? My gut is, is he's going to be great. But you know that first game he's going to be nervous, probably going to have some kinks to work out. Yeah. It will be analyzed into oblivion. Everything oh, yeah. he does well will be clipped up on Twitter, millions of views. Everything that goes poorly that very first game is going to be clipped up into a million views on Twitter. So I just can't wait to see how that plays off. And then you throw in the wrinkle of Greg Olson waiting in the wings. We know how good he is. I just think everything about Tom Brady in the booth is going to be fascinating. Yeah. Again, hard to argue hard to argue like, that right kind of uh, like rogers number, whether whether it's good or bad it's going to be interesting yeah number i, I feel like there's going to be some growing pains but i think he's going to be good for sure from what i've heard i i have a couple co-workers that uh, did some of the testing with him and when they were in the tape room and did some of the demo games with him sounds like he's going to be great but i mean who knows we'll we'll right. see yeah. when the lights are on uh my third one and this isn't just because we're mission guys this is just flat, flat out we're football fans Jim Har Jim Harbaugh on the LA Chargers. My favorite bet of the entire NFL season. Chargers plus one ten to make the playoffs. That just seems like stealing money to me. They they they. I would take that bet without Jim Harbaugh. I mean, we've seen they've been close to the playoffs year after year with a dumpster fire of a culture there. Now right. you get Jim Harbaugh in there. The identity. I mean, how perfect was the draft pick he had? Joe Alt. His dad is in the Chiefs. Uh, ring of honor at uh for the kansas city chiefs he's a he's a lot left tackle from notre dame seems like he's straight from the woods uh, of wisconsin <laughs> or wherever he's from i can't wait to see what jim harbaugh does with that program their first game is at home for 405 start september 8th against the raiders everything about jim harbaugh is weird we, we heard about the the womb comment he made a week <laughs> a, a week ago when they're back in training camp the lights are on the lights are you know shining on you out of the womb I just can't wait to see what happens with Jim Harbaugh. Hopefully it's a good story. I really right. do think they're going to they're gonna win 10-plus games this year, make the playoffs, but can't wait to see how that unfolds in, in Los Angeles with the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah, I mean, he, he, yeah, history tells us they're at least going to be good. I mean, he, he rarely coaches a bad football team. You know, they're in the division. The Chiefs, obviously, are in their division, so that makes it tough right there. And there's a bunch of other really good teams in the AFC. So it's all about Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert got paid all the money and he's the quarterback. If he takes the next step to Patrick Mahomes type of level, then yeah, they'll be, they'll be just fine. They got a ton of talent and obviously Harbaugh is a coach. But yeah, that'll be fun to watch. You know, there's going to be a lot of clips, clips on oh, Twitter yeah. with stupid stuff that he says and does. Yep. Um, my number, number four and five are kind of all, all one. Uh, but first, I'm just going to single out this team in quarterback. Hard Knocks is coming out soon. They just dropped the trailer for the Chicago Bears. I can't wait to see what the Chicago Bears do this year. Caleb Williams, Roma Dudze, they've really brought in some weapons for that offense. I feel like the, the Bears have a swag to them this year they've never had in my life. You've always associated them with the defense. Yeah, you've got the new Bear logo with right. our Bear you know, hand motion with, with <laughs> right. Caleb Williams. I really yeah. think they're going to light it up. Uh, and that's not good news for the Lions. I really think that the Bears are going to be a lot of fun to watch this year, and, and they're going to be kind of ahead of schedule uh, in their rebuild. I think they're going to be great. I, on top of that, the NFC North division as a whole, I think this is not just us. This is just football. This is the most fun division in football. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we have the Lions. We know about them. I mean, a lot of pressure on the Lions, honestly, oh, to win yeah. this division. And, yeah. and it's kind of funny, man. You talk about the window, how fast it can close. Like, imagine if Jordan Love really is that guy, and it's like, shit. We just missed that one year window. Now we have Aaron Rodgers 2.0, Brett Favre 3.0, right. walking through that goddamn division again. So yeah. it's going to be fun to see what the Lions do. Will the rookies deliver? 
That's the key. Will these cornerbacks, if they hit on those two defensive backs, man, yeah. the sky's the limit for this team. But it's a lot of pressure on a couple of rookies in the secondary. You never know how they're going to pan out. The there Vikings, is. go ahead. Well, I was just going to say there is a lot of pressure on the Lions. I agree with you 100%. But the thing I like about the team, and again, it's always a matter of health, but you look at this yep. roster, you know, man for man, it's it's kind Elite. of scary. It's scary. It really and is. Jamison Williams, it sounds like he's been lighting it up in, yeah. in camp. We yep. Man, it would be fun if he really develops into that superstar type wide receiver. Man, he's got that potential. That would be scary to think about. Sam Laporta, Travis Kelsey was asked, who's your favorite tight end and who's the best tight end in the league? He threw out Sam Laporta. Right. I mean, that's Travis Kelsey saying that. It's like, man, so we got the next tra next Travis Kelsey for the next You're 10 right. years and we sign this guy. It's like, that's awesome. And you got um, St. Brown. Jeez. St. Right. Brown. I mean, it's, again, it's on paper, probably Ted, what, outside of 91. On paper is probably the best Lions team, definitely Ever. in my in my lifetime for uh, sure. 100%. And probably Ever. since, you know, that those early 90s. Because, yeah, you go down every, every position – there's not really a hole. Yes, no. corner, you're relying on a couple of rookies. But yep. Terry on Ar Arnold coming out of Alabama was an absolute stud. So I'm, I'm not worried about him and the kid out of Missouri. I mean, he, he he was he was great in the SEC last year. So we'll see how it translates to, to the NFL. But I said it before on the podcast. The only thing that like has me not like worried, everything went right yes. for the Lions last season. Everything, you know, whether it's other teams in the division, like the Packers start off slow and then they did pick up steam at the end of right. the year, but it was too little too late. Yep. No major injuries for the lions. I mean, that's just something you never know about. Every team has to deal with it, but everything last year went right for the lions and you just never know. I mean, they were healthy and, and right? including Jared Goff. He played well, yep. but he's got to do it again. You know? Yep. He got his contract. He kept yep. his offensive coordinator. Taylor Decker got paid. Penny Sewell got paid. They're yep. paying everyone. I mean, yep. they're, they're making everyone happy. So, all right, now you guys got to go make sure people say, eh, last year wasn't just a fluke. Let's see if Campbell can keep coaching them up. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, and on top of that, in the division, I mean, I don't know if it's just like my Twitter echo chamber, but it seems like JJ McCarthy has been struggling. I, have you guys? Is that just my targeted feed? I don't know. Probably. I'm worried that it could get dicey with him. I, it just seems like they have to be good right away, or, or the story. I mean, we saw it. We see it with like Daniel Jones in this Giants hard knocks. Like, man, you got to win basically and be good every year consistently. If you have a down year, Bryce Young, look at him last year. It's like, man, the Panthers might be drafting a quarterback in a year. Right. He's got to come out and he's got to play well, especially when you have Justin Jefferson uh, out in the perimeter catches passes with you, catching passes for you. I'm just worried about McCarthy. I stated he, my claim. I think he's going to be great. Something in my gut this last month is like, man, I don't know. I just got a bad feeling about this. Well, is he slated to be the starter from the get go? I didn't think no. he is. So, I mean, no. I, the things I've seen is that Sam Darnold is the guy. It, it would right. take McCarthy just absolutely blowing up preseason or something. But that hopefully, honestly, I almost hope that it is Darnold yeah. all year. Yeah. Take give, a give McCarthy a year to learn, you know. Don't don't throw him into it, but yeah, I don't think he, I don't think he'd be right. Winner. I, I think he'll be okay. Will he be a pro bowler next year? You know, who knows? But the the, the kid just wins. I, I will doubt yeah. if he's an absolute bust, but right. you never know. I hope so. Um yep. and yeah, I'm with you. It's like I mean, you, you it feels like with these rookie quarterbacks, every team has the plan. Oh, we're gonna sit him all year. Then right. you start off 0 and four, and it's like you just have to he's in. The fire. <laughs> yep. So uh, the last one, I'll just real quick, Packers. Obviously, we touched on them. I mean, Jordan Love just got paid his big money. They yep. have so many fun young players on that offense. Jaden Reed, one of them from Michigan State. We know a lot about him. Yep. He's banged us a couple times. Uh, so I just going to be fun to see how the Packers play out and if Jordan Love really is that guy. Uh, it's going to be an awesome division. Can't wait for the NFL. Can't wait for college football. It's almost time, guys. Yeah, you got it, man. We'll yes. table our college football talk, but when they had their media days, uh, what was it, the UCLA coach? He struggled bizarre. just a little bit at the podium. Yeah. I mean, that was bizarre. Had a bit of a Biden moment up there, but he did kind <laughs> of, like afterwards I saw him say, like, he's not a talker. He was like, honestly, I just didn't know Apparently. what to say. I'm, ex I'm excited to play. Yeah. Or excited to be out there, yeah. Good enough. We'll get more into college football a little later down the road. All right, let's take another short break. Be back with and finish this podcast with some entertainment tonight. So I mentioned it uh, coming out on um, August 27th, right at the peak time of college football. Uh, oh, yeah. The untold documentary with Connor Stallions uh, called Sign Stealer. 
these documentaries untold, they have a great thing going. These stories that are timely, they've just been churning them out uh, for Netflix. And I mean, they're not always the highest quality, yeah. but it gets you, it, it, it gives you that, scratches that itch. Like, let's hear what the hell actually happened with Stallions. But I mean, us as Michigan fans, I don't think it's a good thing. Well, there's my, no way it ends good. My, my only counter to that would be yes, in theory, Swamp Kings would have been amazing, but they didn't tell the yeah, story we all wanted to hear. Johnny Menzel, awesome. But we all we knew all the stuff that they right. did, so that's you know I agree with you. I, I do totally agree with For you. Sure. They're they're knocking it out as far as like the stuff we want to hear about, but then they're just not like they're not finishing it. So maybe right. maybe as Michigan fans, that's a good thing. It's you know, made like, for a story <laughs> like Stallions, where you know no, you basically know nothing real. But again, they might go the the simple like us as Michigan fans, we know a lot about it, but let's really hear like those deep dark stories about what right. exactly happened. Maybe they it, it, it would piss me off if they just gloss over it, like you talk about the Manziel thing. It's like, right. man, we know all those things already, man. Give us something new. Right. So I'm with you. That's a good point. It could end up being a dud, but we'll be watching. Oh, oh yeah. I'll watch for sure. Okay. It's it's coming out, you know, game. I think the week one games when, when the games start. So we're going to be full on college football. The only thing I wonder is, you know, this dude wrote a manifesto for her <laughs> Michigan football and he seemed like the <laughs> ultimate super fan. I'd be shocked if he went into that documentary and just oh, like yeah. completely threw I'll Harbaugh put, yeah. under the bus, just completely trashed the program, said, yes, we were cheating the whole time. Yes. We... I'd be surprised if it went that far. Like, does he 100% like, is he just take all the blame? You know, I don't know about that, he, but. He seemed like a guy like the Joker would attract in the dark night. <laughs> just would die on the sword no matter what. Right. But, so but again but it doesn't seem like he would do this documentary if that was the case so that's what right. makes me nervous like man are we really gonna get some bombshells in this thing that that investigation is still ongoing we know that so it's like yeah. man we just want to be done with that goddamn thing right. but who knows uh another two real quick things for me and then i'll pass it off to you guys receiver the show on netflix that came out a couple weeks ago but we haven't talked since then awesome as always i mean how do you yeah. watch that and not go amon ra wow he's the man yeah i mean my biggest takeaway what an awesome family Really, yeah. John Brown, every time that guy's on the screen, you don't want to take your eyes off it. Everything he's saying is funny. I mean, Matt, you, I, I'm, I've thought about it. It's like you have the, the younglings. I mean, you got to get these guys on a regiment and <laughs> put them into a French vocational school, get them learning French, get them speaking German, get them working out every day. I mean, what a like perfect family, how they were up, they were raised. I mean, there's a scene on Thanksgiving where Amon Ross starts crying, talking about his dad and his mom. I mean, he truly loves those people. We see right. some of these relationships where it's like, you know, Lonzo Ball, and they still loves this LeVar Ball, but you sometimes wonder, man, is this really, were they really raised right? right. Amon Ra, the definition of toughness, man, played through so many injuries, just seems like the ultimate character guy. I'm glad we got him on the Lions. Yeah. Uh, and just what a great family and John Brown, everything about that family. You got to love it. Yeah, I actually haven't watched that yet. I keep, keep meaning to carve out a night to watch at least, you know, St. Brown his episodes or whatever, but all, all I've heard is everything you just said, that it makes him look like an absolute stud playing half of the year with like a torn oblique, yeah. you know, and everything else that he did. So I, I need to get to that at some point. Yeah. Then, I've watched the first episode and it it's fantastic. I haven't, okay. I haven't caught up on the other ones yet, but I will. Last one that I, I'm going to stop talking for probably the rest of the pod. Giants <laughs> hard knocks. Uh, four episodes have been out. Joe Schoen is, is the GM. I see, I like him as a guy, but my God, he seems like a dead man walking. I mean, he sunk all their resources into Daniel Jones, forty million a year. They they throw out the idea they're trying to draft JJ McCarthy. A lot of the stuff on this show, like I honestly can't believe that they're like putting it out there. He, right. He's talking about how the offensive line, how bad they were, basically shitting on his players, and, and like that's the reality of the job. That's what you got to do. But you see the whole Saquon Barkley trade deal, like get get made in real time, and it's like. Man, he wasn't genuine at all with how he handled that. It's like he told Saquon to go test the market and circle, like, quote, unquote, circle back with what your offer is. Like, you, you knew listening to the other end of that conversation, Saquon was never circling back. Right. Like, he was gone. He was dissed. Uh, and, and, and the guy who I get a kick out of is their president, John Mara. Every time he's – he's like the voice of reason in that building every time he's on camera. Uh, like, basically, he's talking about, like, man, I would hate to see Saquon get traded to the – or get go, go join the Eagles – wouldn't you know it? Episode later, Saquon goes to the Eagles. Goes to the Eagles. It, it, it's just, it's been fascinating to see how sitting in on these meetings with how it's handled. Next episode, I believe, is going to be the actual draft. 
So that's probably going to be the best episode yet. But there's been a couple of segments in this show, you know, where there's like 12, 15 minutes where it's all the combine interviews. You're listening to JJ McCarthy, Drake May, Malik Neighbors, you know, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison. Like, where you're just sitting and listening to this interview room with 30 guys peppering mm-hmm. them with questions. And you're just like, wow, like this access is freaking unbelievable. So, as always, Hard Knocks, just A. Plus. I- I've loved watching this offseason, but I still can't believe some of the stuff they're airing, man. It just seems like they're screwed as a front office. Yeah, that that's all the reviews I've seen. I saw the clip of the conversation he had with Barkley, and it was a little bit like, I, I can understand now why Barkley left. It doesn't seem like you really had his back, that you guys really wanted to resign him. No. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll be watching Hard Knocks because of all the other stuff we have to watch. But, right. you're, I mean, you're right. It's always good, that's for sure. Yeah, so that's it. That, I, I really list. would recommend it, but uh, what else do you guys got? So I've just got a couple quick ones I was going to throw out. I'm curious. I don't think we've I, – I probably brought it up last season when the show was on, but I'd be curious. I don't think, Ted, you watch it, but if Jared does, do you watch Bridgerton? I My girlfriend watches it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I've been – kind of the same thing. I'm actually into it, but I've been watching it um, with my wife, and there's a couple spinoff shows too. But I'm not sure if this would be up your alley, Ted. I mean, now it's – this is season three, I believe. So, you know, you get, you'd have a few seasons to kept, catch up on. It is actually really good. The story, the writing is really good. The acting is really good. Um, it's kind of it, – it, like the, the concept is very interesting and stuff. I don't think it would be up your alley. It's a little more rom com type of thing. It's not even really rom-com. Was it rom com or is it uh, is it British, first of all? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like set and that, in what time period? Like yeah, the what time period or something? Or it's back in mm, time period. Now, now you guys are kind of stumping me. Seventeen hundreds, maybe. It's oh, like yeah, way yeah. back, back in those days. So it's it's you know it, it's like a historical type of show. Um, right. Like I said, that it if you're looking something looking for something that's a little bit of an easy watch, a little bit of drama, some mystery and stuff like that. Um, I, I would recommend it, but. Yeah, I wasn't sure if either of you guys were into that. I figured Jared, your your girlfriend probably was. Isn't now, but I mean, you know, Uncle Ted would love it because I mean, isn't there a few some nudity scenes in there? Oh, oh, there, oh dial yeah. me up, dial me up, <laughs> dial me up. <laughs> There's so, some pretty good adult moments for sure. Yeah, so there you go. Um, <laughs> so if, yeah, if that that piques your interest, maybe you know, on a, on a night that you have nothing else to watch, give it a go. Yeah. But the one that I, I would recommend for sure, um, I don't know, do you guys? Ted, I don't think you have. Did, do you have Disney Plus? You have every other streaming service. Uh, I got have, Disney Plus. Yes. Okay, I, I couldn't remember if you had that. So we we hop on there all the time, obviously, to watch stuff with the kids, and we kept sure. seeing the promo for Young Woman and the Sea. Okay. I'm not sure if you guys have seen the promo for this. Oh. It's the story of uh, Trudy Ederly, who I don't want to spoiler alert because I actually didn't know how the story played out. It's a true story. She attempts to swim the English Channel. Mm-hmm. And um, again, if you if you don't know how it actually plays out, I don't want to say, but the movie is really good. It's a story about her, her attempting to swim the English Channel. Um, you know, she obviously wants to be the first woman to do it. And it's it's on Disney Plus. I would highly recommend it. It's super well done. Um, again, I didn't know how it played out going into it. So it was completely like I had no idea um, how, how things were going to go. But if you need a movie to watch, hour and a half or whatever, hour forty-five on Disney Plus, Young Woman and the Sea. It'll take you back to that that time period too. Yeah, um, back then, and I think it was World War One era back in back in like that time. Right, um, yeah, and just a cool, a, yeah, twenty-six. And to think about the challenge of swimming the English Channel is just kind of crazy. Oh, so, you set it up good, man. It yeah. piqued my interest, and I, I'll probably check it out. And I was going to ask you if it's a movie or a series, and you answered that it's a movie. Just one movie. And do you, so, so? Do you know the story? I don't. No. I believe. Yeah, it I, I would say don't Google it. Give, give I keep, won't. keep a little mystery. Keep a okay. little mystery, so you don't know how it plays out. But it's very good. <laughs> I would highly, highly recommend it. Good tip. Good tip. I've got a couple quickies too. Um, you guys know how I like my documentaries and especially on PBS, they, they do it up right. Uh, it's interesting. A, a, a while back in 2023, George Clooney put a film out, the boys in the boat. And it was about, I was just this-, gonna, this was reminding me of the boys in the boat. I was, I was, it's funny you say that. Go ahead. 
Well, did you watch that movie first of all? No, I Boys never. I, I that was like a book I bought. That book had a moment where it was like the hottest thing in the world. I remember like I was okay. like in high school. I tried reading it, and I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, the basic story is these nine working class dudes out in uh, Washington went to the University of Washington. Uh, you know, out west back in back in '36. No, you know, we don't didn't have the social media and all the newspaper and TV coverage, obviously, but they qualified for the Olympics. They in, in rowing, okay, it was in rowing, and I, I I brought up the fact of the movie The Boys in the Boat. I haven't seen it, but I watched the documentary The Boys of '36 on PBS. It was an American Experience thing, and it's just a fascinating story. Uh, you know, it, it it really focused on this one dude, Joe Rance. Uh, kind of a real tough guy, you know, he, he, I think he dropped out of school for a little while, but anyway, long story short, they went to the Olympics and uh, this was the Hitler Olympics in Berlin. You know, the other U S row, rowing events, the first six events, you know, the U S got shut out and they were in the final event. And then they beat uh, Germany and other, other uh, nations and took home the gold. These, these nine, you know, wannabes from Washington picked nice. up the gold and, and the whole documentary, you know, was very, very well done. I'm now looking forward to watching the movie, see how well they, they did huh. it, you know? So I'd recommend that if you get a chance, probably the movie would be very good as well. And then the other thing I got, I watched a while back on Hulu, um, Andrew McCarthy put a documentary, oh. documentary together on the Brat Pack. I don't right. know if you saw any of that or saw, saw it a promo advertised. For it. Yep. it was pretty good. You know, he got with all like Rob Lowe and, and the whole crew there I, in the Brat Pack. So I don't know. I don't know the details. I feel like somebody at work was talking about this. It seemed like they were kind of almost like whiny about how they were represented. Um, basically, like they didn't get any other, you know, movies and stuff like that because of their associate. Is that fair? I don't even know who they're talking about. Yeah. I the, I heard about that. The, the basic premise was. Um, they were very popular young actors. I, they were all in their twenties, very attractive. You know, they were in a series of movies, like St. Elmo's fire, you know, breakfast club, some of these John Hughes movies really had a following. And some writer coined the phrase, the brat pack, a takeoff on the rat pack with Frank Sinatra and his crew. And, and you're right. Uh, they all took offense to it. Most of them took offense to it. They thought it was a big diss, you know, and, and it did probably affect their career. But uh, you really though? I mean, you really think a little bit? I think so. I think I think they got categorized in, you know, I don't know what you would how you would describe it, but you know, they did get pigeonholed in certain type or, of roles. Rob Lowe, so, though, I mean, but, but Rob Lowe, legend, he got Demi, it. Demi Moore too. She did all right, mm -hmm. but it was a, it, if you were you know into those movies, they were '80s movies, but uh, it was well done. I, it was an enjoyable watch. So if was you get a Johnny, chance, was Johnny Depp a part of that Brack Pack? He was on the outskirts of it. Oh, okay. Call it Brat 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 Pack adjacent. Tom Cruise, you know, right. Anthony Michael Hall. Anthony Michael Hall was in it. Uh, Emilio Estevez, uh, Molly Ringwald, Judd Nelson. Those, right. those are really the core members of it. But uh, yeah, it was well done. So yeah, I, I saw a promo for that and thought it could be interesting for sure. Yep, that's all I have, fellas. I think we've uh, we've carried this oh, show. We, long we've got to get. Yeah, we've got to get these these last few things in before football season, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's just crazy How's that. Dragon? I was, How's yeah, the dragon? I'm going to definitely I... see it, but I haven't checked it out yet. I'm surprised season that hasn't come out. Is Sunday. Okay. I did see Yellowstone is coming back in November, I believe. Right. Um, to finish up. But again, I... We're going to talk about this until it ends, Jared. I, I saw you you kind of laughing. We're going to talk about Have Yellowstone to. until it oh, ends. <laughs> no, I, I was laughing because I don't know if it was because of Ted's review of it, but The Last Frontier, I uh -huh. saw they shelved the next couple of them. Yes. Uh, so basically they're never coming out. <laughs> well, that, that's <laughs> so what that's I was going to say. Man. So obviously I'd be curious how done the deal was that Costner was out of Yellowstone because if they're putting – what is it, the the final frontier, the last frontier, Horizon, or, Horizon. You know, Horizon? If they're shelving Horizon, is he going to get back into Yellowstone to finish it up, or was that a I done deal? We're we're done. I'm or Taylor Sheridan. I'm saying you're you're out, man. You well, that, didn't did, wasn't there rumors that Matthew McConaughey might step in in some role, possibly? But I think that was going to be like the current Yellowstone, or it was going to be like. Yes, well, yes, he yeah. is, but it was going to, I don't think it was going to, he wasn't going to be like John Dutton. Okay. It was going to be like another, so right, maybe they bring McConaughey. Yeah, different, char different character maybe, right. right? 
yeah uh, this is so random and maybe inappropriate but <laughs> i i don't know if it's because i because we talked about you know kevin costner and it's been targeting me on twitter i saw something that in for the love of the game there's a deleted scene in the locker room where he had his basically his balls out and <laughs> really and they ended up deleting it because the the like the whatever you call it the focus group said like man this is not very like basically it wasn't quite what you want to see it was not a very impressive uh showing from costner i just thought that was and, weird he really and, and he, apparently costner was like pissed that they didn't include it like he was he almost like didn't like promo the movie because they didn't include this scene in the movie so i just thought weird tangent but i saw that on twitter and thought what you, the hell you said in for love of the game yeah that would like be a locker very, room that'd be a very random scene to have in that movie because that's yeah. a very just like drama romance all of a sudden, if all of a sudden a ball sack shows up in the locker room it kind of it'd be like wait what's I just told you what I swear that's true. Maybe maybe fact check it for next episode. We well, no, so that back, that's but... probably that's probably why the focus group was like, yeah, yeah, we don't we don't need that in this movie. Wow. Yeah, let me while you close it up. Let me fact check. Yeah, this. and I was gonna say, I mean, are you serious? <laughs> it was just pulled... just the nuts. It wasn't the whole no, package. I mean, it was like full full, <laughs> full frontal. frontal. Oh, you know? okay. I, yeah. I could see if if it was in Bull Durham because Bull <laughs> Durham had a little more of like you know romantic type stuff here's here's the report exactly 11 years ago a full frontal shower scene and for the love of game love of the game was cut because the test audience laughed at kevin costner's manhood oh, oh <laughs> why would he want it in there then i don't know man i like remember what we were talking about where he just needs kind of a reality check yeah like yeah. It may, the, you know maybe the horizon finally got us there i guess <laughs> well we will see horizon part two because i'm sure it's already done, so they might as well throw it on Netflix or something. I mean, they got to have it out there somewhere to make a little money okay. back, I would hope. <laughs> you would hope. We will see. All right, fellas, good to catch up with you guys again. We want to, again, thank the great folks at Memorial Healthcare's Wellness Center. Join the Wellness Run Club, headed by Rachel Smith, Ben Jacobs. Get in shape for that October 5th. Go Blue, Go Green 5K. I also want to thank our other partners, ALS of Michigan, AZ Branding Solutions, Detroit Jerky, Jacobs Insurance Agency, Corey Shook and Associates Real Estate Services, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, Success Group Mortgage and Servicing, and the upcoming Shiawassee County Fair starts on August 4th. Get on out to the fairgrounds on Hibbard Road. Have yourself some fun. Speaking of fun, Chi Town, they uh, play again Friday, August 2nd. They're going to play at the Good Times in Goodrich, Michigan. So I hope you can go out and see the boys from Chi Town. That'll do it. Peace and love, everybody. Be kind. Thanks for listening.